A fifth reason to study the history of science is that it's very useful in understanding the philosophy of science. The philosophy of science is a sub-discipline of philosophy which looks at science. It deals with questions like what is the difference between science and pseudoscience? Or what is the difference between science and non-science? A pseudoscientific theory is a theory which claims to be scientific but which is not actually scientific. So this is a well-known problem in the philosophy of science, the problem of demarcating or drawing a clean boundary between a scientific theory and a theory that is claiming to be scientific but which is actually not scientific. Some other questions in the philosophy of science. Are scientific theories true? And if they are true, then why do they change with time? Because after all, truth isn't something that should change, right? And how do scientific theories change with time? Is it that the general pattern of change is uh, is of a continuous progress in scientific knowledge over time or is the pattern something else? Is there a single method that is common to all of science? What is the basic structure of scientific reasoning? That is, how do scientists reason? How do they justify any theory? How do they combine observations and experiments with reasoning to prove a theory? These are all questions for which it's also important to look at historical data to see how scientists in the past reasoned. How did they defend their theory? What methods did they use? How and why certain theories were replaced by others and so on. So given all these benefits of learning about the history of science, it's surprising to see that when people study history in school, they only learn about the history of political and economic systems or the history of empires and military conquests, which wars were fought when, which king won what battle, what trade looked like, how society was structured into different classes and so on. These are all important questions. But the history textbooks don't teach the history of scientific ideas, even though science has had such an enormous influence on human society. Our education is so compartmentalized that we see science and humanities or science and history as two entirely different subjects with no overlap. So the history of science gets neither covered in history classrooms nor in science classrooms typically. But we can study science using the lens of history and that's what the history of science is about.